Hey everyone, welcome to Long Story Short, the podcast. I'm Megan. I'm Wendy. <laughs> and later on in today's episode, we'll be looking back at the parts of pandemic life, life we hope to keep, the lessons we've learned about ourselves, and the things we're ready to see left behind. Goodbye. Before we <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Before we get to that, a reminder that you can find us outside of the show at meganandwendy.com. Of course, that's where all of our podcast show notes live. So anything we mention on the podcast, Wendy does a great job of linking all of that up. And we have regularly updated features on the website, like what to put in a teenager's Easter basket, an updated version of our fan favorite delivery driver. Thank you, Printable. And we will put links to both of those in our show notes, which can be found at Megan and wendy.com slash podcast as always you can join our facebook group long story shorties or you can follow us on instagram where we are megan and wendy lss and of course we always love your emails but i'm a little disappointed because we don't have any this week so email the show at megan and wendy at gmail.com i actually lied what and in our notes i put we don't have an email but we yeah. do. Okay. But, um, this is from Lene, who sends us a Vitamix update. And you may recall <laughs> that she had an issue with her Vitamix in which she blended the blender coil from her shaker bottle in her Vitamix. And we needed to know the update. What happened? So... <laughs> She says the blender spread out the coils of the shaker ball until it was one long metal string wrapped around the base blades. Oh, she tried no. some of the smoothie without realizing there was probably metal shavings on it. Oh, shit. <laughs> Since the base blade does not detach from the pitcher, I could not remove the metal coil myself. I asked our maintenance guy for help and he used some tools to unwind it. Unfortunately, the blades were a little bent after that. The Vitamix still worked, but not optimally. Since the engine base was still strong, we bought a replacement pitcher to use on the original base, and all is well now. I have another question that I hope Lene follows us up on. Okay. Um, a maintenance guy, like, at her home? Does she have a maintenance guy at her home, or was this at a work situation? Now I'm really invested in the story. <laughs> Those are all good questions that I do not have the answer to, but excellent follow-up. Lene, please email us, meganandwindy at gmail.com. I need to know, <laughs> do you have a maintenance guy at your home? I mean, how awesome would that be? That'd I be don't great know. if you had an on-call maintenance guy. I've always wished to have access to like a handyman, handy yeah. person. Yeah. Because I'm like m medium handy. Like I can do Ikea level furniture assembly level yeah handiness but like <laughs> anything requiring like a repair of an electrical item and that's not like my husband's forte either so i've always been really envious of people who have that skill oh my god i would what is that one day at a time what was that guy's name who uh was their handyman who was yes like yes yes around? Sh schneider schneider yes, i need a schneider <laughs> i need a schneider well i don't know if i shared this on the podcast but a month ago or so my husband knocked the side view mirror off of his car and it was mm -hmm. dangling off and we had planned to take it in to get it repaired maybe i did share this anyway he planned to take it into the car dealership to get it repaired and my neighbor saw it and said hey let me know if you need help fixing that and i was like Ex what do you mean that is something you can do yourself <laughs> so he sends me a youtube video turns out it's super easy so i bought the replacement part and repaired it myself but also, I was like, are you on standby in case I'm, like, standing out here with, like, the car door completely disassembled? <laughs> because what am I going to do? So I would not have trusted myself to take on that repair on my own had I not known that I had a backup. Okay, listen. I want to let you know that you have a backup, backup helper because you have a friend, me, who's talking, who has a family business in the auto body repair. And that could have just been an easy, like, no charge, bring it to the shop somebody would have fixed it for you right but then if i have can you have to remove part of the door panel to put the mirror on and so my mm -hmm. fear was that i was going to have it like too far gone to even drive it somewhere <laughs> <laughs> driving down the street with like the missing door panel would have been hilarious <laughs> so that was my concern but i do appreciate the offer <laughs> is there there's no other emails is there's no right? other surprise email no that's uh, it but okay. thank you Lene, for sending that follow-up and uh, let us know your handy person situation are they available to come down to Orange County? That's right. Speaking Jeez. 
Um, follow up. Last week's main episode on Tuesday was the first in our Conversations with Friends series. Well, first of all, I don't know if you know this, but it is our second most listened to episode of all time, quickly about to overtake the first. Wow. Yes. That's amazing. And the first was published in November and gets regular listen. So it's kind of been building up over time. This has only been out in the world for less than a week as of the recording of this episode. May have even taken it over at this point. That's awesome. Um, so that was our episode with Jenny Canzanieri, where she talks about sobriety. We got a ton of feedback on that episode. You can see some of the responses on our Instagram. And I think that episode was a bit of a departure in terms of the tone. But the reality is this podcast is about us. And mm-hmm. while we, I love doing the light, fun, let's have a good time. I also think we're multifaceted people and we kind of want to mix it up every once in a while. For sure. For sure. In fact, like over the weekend, I've been working on, um, yes, I've been adding our podcast to imdb.com. You guys, if you listen to our Hallmark episodes, you know, I'm obsessed with IMDb (laughs) and I just learned that we can add our podcast to it. So I've been working on that and, um, it needed some sort of like tagline. So I was going back through, um, episodes and listening. And, um, Megan, you say at one time, like we're women, we're moms, we're a lot of things. And so I think that conversation with friends episode encompasses that we are a lot of things and we have friends who are a lot of things. And it's okay that the tone isn't at like this level 10, funny, light and happy. We're having real conversations. And that to me is what's most important for the podcast. Yeah. And some of the guests we have lined up, uh, the things they're talking about, I mean, they're not all deep, heavy conversations. You know, yeah. the con- the point of that is to like talk about where you are at the recording of that episode and what's going on in your life. So some of them will be light and some of them will be, you know, heavier and we're here for all of it. Yeah. And what makes me most excited about those episodes is that if the content is going to touch someone. If it doesn't resonate with everyone, that's okay. We appreciate the listen, but it's going to get to somebody and make a difference for somebody. So that's what really excites me about it. Yes, exactly. Um, Can we talk about something I'm not excited about? Sure. That is the fact that we mentioned a couple weeks ago that we were doing a mini challenge in our Facebook group called (laughs) Shorties Get Moving. And for me, the goal of the challenge was exactly that, to get moving. The, and? <laughs> well, the, the spoiler is it was a fail, but here's the thing. Life, I was talking to my neighbor, life, because we just don't go as many places, all of my, like, a lot of my movement that would normally happen during the day is gone, right? Like, I'm not running as many errands. I'm not walking in and out of school. I'm not doing all of these things. And so, though, like, even my regular walking in and out of places is reduced a lot. Okay. And so I was just trying to get myself up. And I think in some ways I was more aware of how much I am and am not moving on any given day. But here was my biggest fail. And it wasn't so much in the movement department, but in the tracking, because I do not have a currently ingrained habit of putting my watch on the charger every night. And so I'll take it off as I'm getting ready for bed and where I get ready for bed is not where my Apple Watch charger is. And I maybe should just go ahead and change that, like adjust the system to work for me. And then I'd wake up in the morning and it wouldn't be charged. And then I would have to charge it. And then by the time I would put it on, it's like 11 o'clock in the morning. And then I feel like (laughs) I've lost all of this progress. And then I feel like it doesn't count. And so then it it was just like this kind of bad cycle that I was in. (laughs) Okay, I totally hear you about that because I was wearing my watch last week and it died and I have not charged it since. (laughs) But for me, I really enjoyed the challenge and I'm hoping, like, is it over yet? It is. It was only two weeks, but um, I would like, I would be interested in doing another one. The other thing that bugged me is like I was seriously far behind and then I was like, I'm never going to catch up. So then I kind of like mentally give up a little bit. Yeah, 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 totally. (laughs) Well, okay. So that was me. Okay. First of all, our friend Heidi, who is a listener of the show and she was also in the challenge group, she had texted me or I don't know if it was in the Facebook chat or whatever, but she was like, look, you just got to get out there and go. And, um, because it's it had been 
cold and then it was dark mm-hmm. and I was like making all these excuses. Raining. Right. And she's like, well, put your jacket on and go. And so um, that's what I was doing. But then I would walk like two miles, three miles, and I would still be in like 11th place. And I'm like, what the hell is everybody else doing for exercise that are like in first place and I'm in 11th place. I couldn't I'm, figure it out. Yeah, I'm dying to know what their exercise routines look like to give them that many points. And I also wonder if they're telling their watch because there would be times, there was a day when I was cleaning for hours and I went in and I put it in. I'm like, I'm doing an indoor walk because I was nonstop moving. So I am making it count this yes. As a yeah. workout, yeah. which you wouldn't normally have. But I was like, I'm moving. I'm up and I'm down and I'm not sitting down. So, yeah, I'm counting this as a workout. But a lot of times it didn't count things like that as movement. And I kind of am like, you need to lower your bar a little bit, watch, because you need to <laughs> meet me where I am. <laughs> I cleaned the house one day, too, and I, I uh, set the watch, <clears throat> excuse me, as I was doing a uh, in uh, a dance an indoor dance, something. Mm-hmm. I don't know, whatever. Anyway, I mean, I did have music on and I was moving, but I wasn't like dancing. I was like scrubbing the sink, you know? So, um, yeah, you have to like set, you know, the thing up on the watch. I don't know all the terms of these things, but like you got to set the exercise on the watch to know that you're doing something. Right. I guess. I, guess. I don't know. All I do know is that you and I are definitely not role models in terms of of uh, fantastic exercise habits, movement habits per day. Because indeed, I, I really th- first need a charging habit before. <laughs> Look, babe, progress over perfection, right? Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, speaking of movement, yeah. <laughs> what'd you do yesterday? <laughs> I got this bright idea. So we have a, uh, first of all, we have a, what I call a, a Bobo Peloton. If you don't mm-hmm. know the term Bobo, I think it, I a, a friend named Erica had told me about it. I think it means like fake or, um, yeah, fake, right? Or what well, would you I call it? I learned it on the Gilmore guys. Oh, really? That's the first person I ever heard use it. But yeah, they would use like like the knockoff version. Of knockoff. Something. That's a that's a great. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, they just talked about Bobo too on um, that new podcast I'm listening to. Listen, listen to Sassy. Mm-hmm. Um, they talked about it there too. Anyway, yes. So we have a knockoff Peloton. It's called Echelon. It's a it's a bike with a screen. Whatever. Anyway, it was a pandemic purchase. <laughs> um, finally, one year later, I decided. I'm going to give this thing a give this thing a ride. Oh my god. I set out to do a 20 minute beginner ride. I only lasted about 12 minutes. Um and I started and stopped and started and stopped. The next day, so that was Saturday, Sunday. I am in so much pain. <laughs> like, what is wrong with me? My butt hurts, my back hurts, my legs hurt. 12 minutes, 12 minutes. But it's an intense 12 minutes. Those no, it, it not- was not. No, it was not. <laughs> well, okay. Was not. But it's not the kind of workout you've been doing. So I think 12 minutes is better than no minutes. And then maybe next time you do 13. Oh, my God. You know, our friend LaShawn, who was on our Girls Gone Hallmark podcast several months ago. Anyway, she on her Instagram, she's always showing how she rides her Peloton. And she recently, like, shared an update about, like, how she had reached her year mark of riding the bike and how she leaves it all out on the bike. I found it so inspirational and that's why I decided to ride the damn bike. I'm, I just don't think I'm cut out for it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't think you know that after one ride. <laughs> I'm having a real crisis about it because my body hurts so bad right now that I won't be able to get back on the bike for like another week at least. Yeah. So I, I don't you. I don't know if you guys are like regular Peloton riders or Bobo Peloton riders or outdoor bike riders, please give me some tips because my nether regions that sit on the bike hurt so bad. I don't know how to get past that. Okay, so I know a bunch of people that have the Peloton and they've all complained about this same thing and they've all said it's like a two week thing 
and then that goes away. So apparently you just like lose feeling and then it's fine. But it is uncomfortable for about a week or two and then you adjust. So that part I do think you need to power through. I have you known me to power through it? <laughs> Look, I get it. Obviously, I could not even close my rings for two weeks, so I get it. But uh, I'm over here sideline coaching you. Maybe I'm just gonna stick to like the neighborhood morning walk. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Update coming, guys. Update coming. All right. Uh, we are one week out. Six days out from Easter, which that kind of snuck up on me. Mm-hmm. Did you decorate your house? I did, Megan. Shocked. And I I know, Shocked. right? I know. I don't know why I have like this reputation of being like a holiday hater because I don't hate all holidays. But maybe I like hate the effort that it takes to like make make your holiday look nice. Mm-hmm. But I did drag out the Easter box and I put up some Easter decorations, which then had me thinking because I did it and I was like waiting for like a reaction from the rest of the family and nobody cared, you know. So when does the time come that you stop decorating for every holiday outside of Christmas? Well, we don't decorate for every holiday we do like fall decor we do easter decor we do christmas and then we have a couple little things thrown in like we might have a couple like fourth of july things or yeah but but those three times of year we have seasonal decor and i don't imagine that we will stop decorating for easter anytime soon i enjoy it i mean i think the kids like it they helped not that they had a choice, so I don't know that they enjoyed the decorating process. Um, and for me, my husband is super into it. So I think I could – I wasn't even thinking about it. I came home one day and he had it all out. And I was like, oh, great. Let's put it out. But sometimes the idea of like hauling it all out of the garage, like if he weren't into it, sometimes I might be like, hmm, maybe we're not going to do that unless somebody says anything. Yeah. No, that's how I feel about like Valentine's Day or whatever. Oh, yeah. You know, and I, and I'm talking Easter. I only have like a couple little things. It's not like I, you know, it's not Christmas. Christmas is a whole nother level here at this house. But, mm-hmm. um, s- I don't know. Maybe I'm like hung up on the fact like it, the decor feels kind of childish. And now that my daughter is like a teenager, she like doesn't give two shits about it. So like, mm, why do I keep doing it? You know, you could. I mean, if you don't like it and they don't care, then I don't know that there is a reason to still do it. We've definitely updated our Easter decor in the past several years. But, you know, it's eggs and bunnies, so it is a little childish. But we have, like, the Pottery Barn little ceramic bunnies, and we have... Yeah, 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 yeah. I think there's a way to do it without it feeling like it's a toddler's home. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just don't know. Like, she just didn't care. Nobody cared. So I was like, well, I kind of like looking at it, but, but I'll put it away, like, as soon as Easter's over, so... Oh, so will we, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um... When is your spring break? Right now. Oh, right now. Nice. So we're not doing anything. I mean, we'll probably go to the beach. The weather's beautiful all of a sudden. Like it went from like cold and dreary to sunny and warm. And you know, I'm a hot weather hater, but even I am kind of enjoying it a little bit. And I'm especially enjoying it because the 10 day forecast, like the last three days show that it cools off again. So I'm like, I can handle a week of hot because it's going to cool off again. <laughs> I just hate when it's like, and this is how Southern California is. If you guys don't live here, it's like 65 degrees one day. And then the next day it's 92 degrees. Like there's no in between. And like, I need like a slow ramp up, you know, I'm right. ready for summer. I love summer, spring and summer are my favorite. Like, but give me a slow ramp up. Don't throw me into the fire, you know? You're not on spring break. No, next week we're on spring break and we are actually headed out to the desert, um, which is my least favorite place to be because I don't do well in heat at all. Like high temperature heat, like just does not makes me so sick. Um, but it's, it's not too bad out there right now. And oh, good. Um, yeah, we're going to, you know. We got a place and we're going to hang out and go to the pool. We're only going out there for just a couple days. We just need to get away from our damn dogs, to be honest. (laughs) Tell me about the damn dogs. Oh, my God, you guys. 
So our pandemic puppy, Roxy, just really keeps us on our toes. Like the dog eats everything. I mean, I spent $1,000 at the vet last week because she ate something and they had to like x-ray and see where it was at and was it moving through and will she have surgery and blah, 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 blah. It ended up being like a tiny stick like the size of a fingernail like it was so tiny and I was like there's no way that this was bothering her that much I just you have a dog that eats stuff right Ugh, yeah so my dog Bailey is 10 pounds so he if you drop it on the floor like he's going for it he has been he's one and a half years old and he's been to the emergency vet three times for eating something that could potentially kill him twice it was a single raisin Oh, no. And raisins, just FYI, super poisonous to dogs, raisins and grapes. And the first time it happened, I knew he had just eaten one. And I called my vet and they're like, bring him right away. And I was like, but it was one. They're like, no, right away. They induce vomiting. Then they pump fluids. Then they check their kidney function. And of course, like, we're going to do what it takes. But I feel like a terrible dog parent now having have taken him three times. <laughs> <laughs> my God, they put my damn dog in like the dog hospital for the day and mm. hooked her up to an IV for fluids and blah, 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 blah. Uh, yeah, I feel like, you know, because of course I have to like post it on my Instagram, you know, and then I feel like, uh oh, someone's going to come take this dog away from me because they think that I don't watch it, you know, because she's eaten so many things and it has caused so many problems. But whatever. Well, my husband is always like, this dog isn't trained. And I was talking to my neighbor who got a puppy right around the same time we got Bailey. And she was like, you'd have to train him not to be a dog. Dogs eat things. Yeah, and I do think yeah. there's a level of training where they just don't pick up things. Like, I don't know. I mean, I think, like, if you see it happen, that's one thing. Um, But, like, if it's on the ground and one of the times it was an outside situation, like, if it's on the ground outside, I, I think dogs are dogs. Yeah, I agree, too. I just, ugh. I know. I feel like a bad dog parent sometimes, too. Me too. But, and like, I just we took him straight to the vet. Like, I fucked yeah. over the money. Right. And I've now figured out which one of our local vets has extended hours for these situations. So That's so nice. It is really, really nice. nice. They're open till midnight every night. So That's really cool. All right. What you watching? I have been watching so much Netflix. I can't. Okay. This is what I thought. I was thinking about today. And I was like, you know, Megan shares every book that she reads on Instagram. <laughs> so the podcast is a perfect place for all the shows that I've been watching that I'm going to share with you guys. And I and I made a list and I have like six. And I was like, you know, what? I don't have enough time on the podcast to talk about six shows. So um, I'm going to share one or two. And then um, if you check out MeganandWendy.com, there is going to be a brand new blog post there that will have everything I recommend. Um, but first up is Last Chance You Basketball on Netflix. Megan, have you ever seen it? No, but I know. Wasn't there a football version? Yes, ma'am. And I think you've talked about that years ago in an old YouTube video. Oh, I probably did. Yes. Last Chance You is on Netflix. And basically what it is, is it, it's, it's a documentary. It's several episodes. It follows, um, student athletes who tried their hand at division one sports and maybe didn't cut it because of academics or they got in trouble or whatever. And so they end up in the community college sports circuit uh -huh. and it's their quote unquote last chance to like, you know, do something with their life in athletics. Um, so they have three previous seasons of football basketball is a brand new and it just came out like two weeks ago and it's just always so good it's always so so good you're like rooting for these kids because you know they're kids they're 19 20 21 they make mistakes they have bad home situations it's always like in like um kind of like I would say like in urban areas inner city areas where like uh, kids don't have as many opportunities as some other kids and um, you know you just want the best for these kids you want you follow their backstory oh it's just so good and then at the end they like tell you like an update and that's like the best part of it for me that's really good I enjoy it if you like sports I would highly suggest 
watching a show like this, but Megan, I is don't it think the you'll... same kids all season or is it different kids every episode? No, it's the same kids all season long. So it follows them. The basketball season, it follows them through the entire basketball season, like training and games and, um, and then like what's going on in their lives. And mm-hmm. so then I will tell you, like at the end of the season, like, did they get accepted to like a, you know, another school? Cause you know, a community college, you only have two years there. You can't stay right. there, you know? Um, and, and when you play college sports, you only have like certain number of years of eligibility. And so. Yeah. So, you know, the time is ticking for these kids and it's like, well, what are you, you know, you got, they got to pull themselves up by the bootstraps and make something happen. So it's just, it's so good. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. All right. And then in a full 180, guess what I started? I can't even begin to guess. Superstore. Stop. I did. (laughs) Do you like it? Okay, so I've only watched one episode. Okay, but okay, but um, I did not want to watch this show because I thought it was like um, stupid hijinks happening inside a Walmart. You know, mm-hmm. like I, I don't know what I thought about it, but I watched the pilot the other night. It's available on Hulu, mm-hmm. um, seasons one through six. Is there more than six seasons? No, I think six is the final, current and final season. Okay. Because it just ended, right? Like on NBC? Uh Uh-huh, I think so. Or is about to, yes. Okay. I really liked it. It made me feel warm. It was like, it was like a feel-good, funny show. Yeah, I liked it. like a family in this store. Well, I don't think I'm quite there at that point, but... Uh, is it America Ferrera who plays uh, that? Yeah, she's so good. She's so good. Yeah, she's so good. Anyway, I really, really enjoyed it. And so that is going to be my like new show that I'm, you know, I got to watch six seasons of it. So it I know I'm only in weeks. season four, but it is the perfect like wind down show. It's very soothing to watch. It's very like bright, you know, so it's just kind of it's just relaxing. And even when it's heavy like there's some heavier topics that they tackle even when it's heavy you know they keep the tone really light and i honestly i think like the coloring of the show like how bright and vibrant the colors are make a big difference that's so weird because you know we talked about it in our old jobs episode that i used to work in a grocery store Mm -hmm. and that fluorescent lighting is not great for you so it's so funny that you have such a like like a, an appeal for it you know yeah but i think it's bet it's you know studio lighting not terrible grocery store lighting. yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. <laughs> totally um anyway so i will keep you updated on that but yes check out meganandwendy.com you can see all the shows i'm watching and for one final update do you want to talk to us about your phantom hair Oh, my God. This thing, it has, a few episodes ago, we talked about, like, how I have this feeling of this, like, phantom hair touching my face, and I'm always, like, trying to wipe it away. Well, now it has grown into this full-blown scratching addiction I have on my face. Mm -hmm. Something Mm -hmm. is happening. I don't know if the nerves on, like, my cheek now are all inflamed, but I'm, like, scratching my face all day long. Like, literally have a little scab from scratching my face too much. I think I might have to go to the doctor. I don't, but I feel ridiculous going to the doctor talking about, like, I'm scratching my face. You guys... If this has ever happened to you or you know anything about it, please email us because I'm having a full breakdown about it. It's like people who feel bugs on their skin. Yes. Or am I going to be on some reality TV show? (laughs) I've scratched half my face off because I feel a hair. I don't know. I'm freaking out a little bit, to be honest. Yeah. So if you have any thoughts on what could be causing (laughs) Wendy's phantom hair nerve ending please let us know. And we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. If you've made an effort to shop small lately, we highly recommend checking out Celestial Shell. Michelle makes beautiful 
handmade items like zippered pouches and book sleeves, and they make great gifts or even treats for yourself if you feel like some doing some online shopping. So check out celestialshell.com. You can use code LSSFRIENDS15 at checkout for a discount. All right, welcome back. This episode was inspired by a question that we received in our Facebook group. So right now we are putting together questions for an Ask Us Anything episode of the show. So if you have a question, email us, Megan and Wendy at gmail.com. That is in our show notes, M-E-G-A-N. Um, and we would love to answer any and all questions. It can really be about anything. Uh, but we thought this question could be turned into a full episode. So that's what we're doing. And the question was, what do we hope sticks around? What are we ready to let go of? And have we learned anything about ourselves throughout the course of the pandemic? Well, I would like to say there was some sort of energy happening this weekend because uh, we had gotten together with some friends and we were talking about the podcast and they're like, what's on tap for this week? And I was like, good question. I don't know. And and then organically, one of them says, oh, you guys should talk about the things that you like or want to stick around that had happened in, you know, during the last year. So it's just so crazy that this question came up in our, you know, Facebook group too. So anyway, with that being said, Megan, are there parts of this past year that you've enjoyed that you want to stick around? So look, obviously I would never say I'm grateful for the pandemic, but (laughs) parts of the last year. So I'm a homebody naturally. I like being home. I enjoy being home. I like going places, but I'm not upset with like a weekend spent at home. So parts of this were okay for me. That being said, I think breaking out of the habit of being at home is going to be a challenge for me. Like I know some Mm. people are like running to get out. And my husband's like, we need to like reintroduce you to society because I am like, "Eh, I'm good here now. Like this is where I live. (laughs) We don't need to go anywhere ever again. So, you know, I've kind of liked the slower pace of life. I've liked not rushing out of the house every morning and not running around to a million kid activities. Of course, I miss my kids having all that interaction. Like it's, you know, it's like a double edged sword. Like I've enjoyed sure. the slower pace. I've enjoyed um, curbside pickup. Can we just make that a thing everywhere? I, I think I think it will have- stay. Yeah, like, I want restaurants to have, like, extended takeout options. I want places like Michael's that would have never had a curbside pickup option before. I want that to stick around. Like, I want all of these places to continue this. And I really like the amount of time that my kids are spending outside, kind of on a forced basis, because Mm -hmm. my kids are, they're like me. They're not outside people. They're indoorsy. But they're only allowed to hang out with their friends outside. So if you want to see a friend, you got to be outside. And I have kind of liked that they're just spending all this time outside and that even I am more interested in spending time outside simply because it's a change of pace. So like, what are you just like kicking it on the front porch or whatever? (laughs) I mean, I'm more like, we spend a lot more time in the backyard and I've like, we're doing some work back there I mean, it took me 12 months to be like, I need to spruce this place up. So I'm going to sit back here and look at her all day long. <laughs> we go for more walks and we go, we spend a lot more time at like the beach. Just, I, I don't like outside, but I'm more interested in being outside because it's something to do. So you guys, if you don't know Megan, like she's already said it today, she hates the heat. So mm-hmm. there's only a small window of time Megan enjoys being outside. And I think we're in it right now. So <laughs> yeah, it's closing. <laughs> yeah, I would I would say the same thing too. like in the early days of the pandemic, um, there was so much activity happening like on our street. There was kids riding bikes and outside people outside playing basketball. You know, they weren't. Well, you know, some of them were together, but there were a lot of like families outside where they were Mm -hmm. playing basketball or down the street, they set up like a volleyball net and they were playing volleyball in the cul-de-sac and like people riding bikes, like adults riding bikes, not Mm -hmm. just kids. Um, It kind of made the neighborhood feel alive 
where as opposed to like you never see anybody outside because we're always so busy. We're running here, running there, or we're just, you know, you know, sheltered up in the house all the time. You know how people don't talk to each other. So Mm -hmm. um, I loved like those early days of just like everybody being like outside and just like kind of like, oh, making the best of it. And, you know, I I'm going to miss that a little bit, I think. Yeah, and I think especially in the beginning, there was a feeling in our neighborhood of, like, we did, like, the shamrock hunt. Where everybody put, like, shamrocks in their windows, and oh, there yeah. were several iterations yeah. of that. And I liked that feeling of kind of, you know, everyone being in it together, and I yeah. that faded, and it became kind of contentious, not in my neighborhood, but just overall – you know, the commercials went from, like, we're all in this together to wear your damn mask. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, I liked the early community feel of it. Yeah, I agree. Like, I have that in my notes here, like, neighbors connecting. Like, like I said, you know, we're very much into the ha- – or were, you know, you drive up in your driveway, you open the garage, you go, in, you go inside. You don't say, mm-hmm. like, hello to somebody who's outside. But, y- you know, like, there was a – community feel like you said i yeah it felt very like kind of small town at almost like if Mm -hmm. if i ever knew what living in a small town feel felt like that's what it was like you know we're all kind of helping each other i remember like um the uh the gal in charge of like our hoa sent an email out to everybody and was like look we have people in our community who need you know masks and or need help getting groceries who can help do that and there was like this helping neighbor helping neighbor thing that was so nice Mm -hmm. and like you said though that that has totally faded so i don't know i kind of miss that i do too and you know i just don't think (sighs) it was sustainable particularly given how It just broke down. And that's, you know, one of the things I won't miss is the fighting and the two sides of it all. You know, I guess it's just human nature to take sides and the fighting about everything and the science of it all and the way that it has caused me to look differently at certain people and certain relationships. I won't miss that. Unfortunately, I don't think I don't know how easily repaired some of that's going to be. Right. I think it was almost like the perfect storm, though, this year, because we had a pandemic plus a very contentious um, election. Right. And so everybody just was like raw and it showed who they were. And I think over the last year, we've just realized like, OK, I'm not down with you and you've showed who you are and I'm not that person. So, um I think it's been kind of an age of enlightenment as well in terms of like seeing the true colors of people. And on the one hand, I'm like, that's really unfortunate. On the other hand, you know, you think, okay, well now, at least now I know. Yeah. They were still the same people. You just didn't know. (laughs) They just didn't have the opportunity to show you that side of themselves. Right. Right. On the lighter side, you know what? I'm really loved and have been grateful for, for this last year. Uh, DoorDash. Yeah. We have gotten so much takeout food over the last year. And at first it was like, oh, we have to help our small, you know, neighborhood restaurants. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's keep them alive. And then it was like, oh, I hate cooking. I've been in the house all day long. <laughs> you know, whatever. Right. Um, gosh, darn. I really love DoorDash. As much as you love a curbside pickup, I sure love DoorDash. <laughs> food delivery became more than just like a convenience. It was like, yeah, uh, you know, food really was kind of the one constant treat that we had. In the beginning, we were making fun meals. And then that kind of (laughs) felt like, let's have a full turkey dinner because we're home and why not? (laughs) Uh, And that kind of, you know, fell apart a little bit. But at the same time, takeout was like, oh, this is we're we're not going out, but we can make this night at home Mm -hmm. special. Yeah, I remember like for Easter last year, we did, we ordered food from like a super fancy restaurant and had it at home. I think we did the same for Mother's Day. Yeah, there were like these moments of like, those are highlights for me because we like, you know, 
went big on those days. Yeah. It was still, we still try to make it special, you know, the day, like as much as we could without being able to like get together with family and friends and see everybody and, you know. But I will say the flip side of that is like, I'm super happy to see that go. Like, I'm really looking forward to social gatherings. Me too. And you know me. Like, I don't love a social gathering. So (laughs) I'm like desperate for them right now. Yeah, I am looking forward to being able to have people over and not have to second guess it and not have to think about you know like the mask conversation and Mm -hmm. because now like we have seen people not very many but it's outside and certain people i know how how they're going to behave and sometimes it's like i don't even want to have the conversation about like you know would they wear a mask or wondering what's going to happen when you show up i'm looking forward to okay (laughs) we're all vaccinated it's okay to hang out together i'm looking forward to that time i the hard part right now is like you can see the light at the end of the tunnel, but we're not completely there. Yeah. And so it does kind of feel like it's dragging a little bit right now, even though we're so close. That's the challenge is like you can see it. I know it's coming and we're not 100 percent there. So hanging on for the last little bit. It's hard. It's a challenge. Yeah. yeah. No, I get it. But like, I think that if you look back, like especially for me right now, I've been looking back at like a year ago and this time last year when they were like taking down basketball hoops at parks and Uh um, just really putting like, those were dark days, dark days. And I'm so glad to be out of that time. Um, And so it does make it a little bit more, you know, challenging, like knowing that we're we're here it's almost like it's like the final days of christmas you know the christmas season like we're getting to christmas day we're almost there yeah and it's just it's it's taking for me it's like the last couple weeks of being pregnant it's like okay okay that's (laughs) a better analogy probably my (laughs) babies were both late they're both 41 weeks and both had to be induced and with pregnancy you hit kind of a point like around 36 weeks where your doctor's kind of like eh like obviously they don't want you to have the baby then but if you went into labor they wouldn't stop you at that point so you kind of feel like it could happen any day and then when any day turns into five weeks every day feels like it's a hundred hours long yeah totally um and i kind of am feeling that same feeling i felt like that anticipation like you know there's an end point it cannot go on forever but you don't have like a precise picture in your mind of what Mm -hmm. it looks like well and there's we don't quite know the end date like there's almost like there's all this talk about like well school might be totally full back in maybe this year maybe this school year or it might be next school year and then you have like our governor like will just come out of one day out of the blue and be like okay everything's back open you know so it's like there's no like schedule we're following and that's what makes it hard for me is like the unknown. Mm-hmm. Well, and I I think at some point maybe I had imagined like a switch would be flipped. And I, I didn't think it through very clearly. Obviously, it doesn't make sense. But like one day we would be – life would be normal again as opposed to it would just incrementally get better, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. okay, now I'm more – perhaps there will come a day I'm more comfortable even eating outside at a restaurant. And then, oh, my kids have opened up their circle a little bit more. Like they're still outside with masks, but it's not like – we're not keeping it to this tiny group of friends. And like, I think it's incremental. And our school district has come out and said, you know, even in light of the new recommendations, they're not changing their model for this school year. They have, they said it'd be too disruptive and teachers would change. We're so close to the end. Yeah. Um, And you know what? I'm kind of okay with that. Our school district has been open since September. My kids already changed teachers once. I'm kind of okay with just powering through and getting our focus on reopening in the fall. Right. Because they have said, like, we will have full-time school available for anybody who wants it. And I'm holding on so tightly to that belief that it won't get taken away. And I do believe that it will happen. But it's just that it's like, okay, every day is kind of a new thing that Mm -hmm. we're doing. And it's not just like, okay, okay. We're open and everyone just goes running. And part of it is the pace of vaccination, right? Like some people are fully vaccinated, but none of our kids are. And 
We've been eating like at outdoor restaurants like for months now. And that's actually over the weekend. That's where we're at. And it was so like, I just really appreciate how like local restaurants have like transitioned into creating like these like really nice outdoor spaces you know, dining al fresco under lights, not in a tent, which I think is kind of ridiculous. I'm talking about like actually, right, right. you know, open air eating. And they would like str- would string lights and have like outdoor music and like really trying to create a, uh, an atmosphere that feels normal, mm-hmm. um, but abiding by like, you know, recommendations. So I just, I, I don't want to see that go away. I kind of hope that they keep things like like that available to people. What have you learned about yourself this year? Have you learned anything? <laughs> I've just solidified what I know about myself. Like I am and then none of it's good, honestly. Like I am an anxious person and I really dug into that <laughs> over mm-hmm. the last year. Uh and that drove a lot of my decisions. Um you know, I, I'm a rule follower, and I think that really came through in the last year. I wasn't interested in making my own rules and uh, was frustrated by people who didn't want to play by the rules and perhaps to a point that was too rigid, um, but I am who I am. So I don't know that I've had any enlightening moments about myself over the past year other than like a lot of therapy would probably do me some good. Ah! <laughs> well, I'll tell you, like, you know me, I'm a regular therapy goer and uh, my therapist had switched to a Zoom model and I was like, look, that's not going to work for me. So mm-hmm. um, I spent many months not going to therapy over the last year. Um, we're finally back face to face, but um, therapy works wonders, friends, if you don't have a therapist. Anyhow, um, you know what I have learned? I have learned that I'm not as good as a housekeeper as I thought I was. <laughs> uh, they, we are lucky enough to have like a regular cleaning service come every couple of weeks. And uh, during this last year, we kind of put that on pause and like, yeah, I hate cleaning the house when I have to, you know, uh, especially our house has been especially dirty with like everybody home all the time and all the time. Yeah. I've also learned that how much I really really love my alone time oh, and my own yeah. my own space and mm. the freedom to do whatever I want to do during the day without other people being here. Mm-hmm. Um I yeah, so I'm going to like cherish those times when they return. <laughs> Yeah, that is something that I've definitely, I've always known that I'm an introvert and that I recharge with alone time. Yeah. And always, like, by the end of summer, I'm always a little bit anxious to get back to a routine of that. But definitely that has been so obvious to me. And I, yeah, my kids went back to school, but they go two days a week and never on the same day. So, they're always here and I miss the ability to just run an errand because when nobody's home without having to make arrangements and figure out what everybody's doing and yeah. make sure everyone has what they need. And right now, Wednesdays are the one day a week because my husband works from home that I can kind of run out without needing to plan the whole day out. Mm-hmm. And I look forward to Wednesdays so much right now. And sometimes <laughs> it's like I'm just going to the bank and the grocery store, but I don't feel like. I'm on call for those couple of hours. Oh, my God. I understand completely. Although there's going to be a long summer. I was telling my husband, I was like, I really, I need these kids busy this summer. I need, (laughs) I need some scheduled activities because there's just been, I don't do well with too much downtime. Mm -hmm. And my kids are not super great at, well, one of my kids is, and one of them is not great at entertaining themselves Mm -hmm. without a screen. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, and so I kind of, I'm like, let's, what can we get them doing on somewhat of a schedule? So I don't feel like I'm constantly fielding the screen time requests and constantly trying to find something to occupy this kid. I'm I'm done being the social director. 
Oh, yeah, I understand. Especially with two. Like, I only have one, so, and she's pretty self-sufficient. So, um, I, I understand your struggles, though. That's hard. What about, are you open to sending them to, to day camps or anything like that this summer if they're available? I am. And it's funny, a friend of mine, there's this camp that I, my daughter had been interested in going. It's a performing arts camp. And my friend sent me the link for it. And I looked at it. And it's fully online. And mm-hmm. she hadn't noticed that. Mm-hmm. And I was like, Oh, man, I just am not interested in a two week zoom camp. And also, it was still kind of expensive. And I was like, I don't I'm not, that's not where we are right now. You yeah. know, uh, yeah. this summer, last summer, it was like the only option. There was nothing else to do. But this summer, um, I'm still waiting to see what's going to happen. But I do think we'll get some of that. And what about like travel, though? Like, why don't you just plan lots of like travel, <laughs> even like if it's short trips or day trips or... Yeah, we definitely want to travel. And I'm still in like a weird place where we kind of have like planned out a couple things. And then last night I woke up in a panic. I'm like, is this a good idea? Like, oh, my I God. just, I think I do. I, I don't know. I really want to travel. That is the one thing I've missed a ton is not even being able to really plan for that. Because mm-hmm. as much as we love traveling, I also love like planning future trips and thinking about where we might go and talking about the things we might do. I enjoy the whole process of like prepping for a trip. And so not even having that because there was so much uncertainty about when we would be able to again um, has been a bummer. And so right now I, it's, I do think there's lots of travel that will be okay this summer, especially domestically. But last night I'm telling you my brain, it was like rapid fire throwing things at me. (laughs) <laughs> I needed to worry about. And then I started to fall asleep again. I'd be like, oh, wait, I forgot this one thing. And it was like two hours of that. Um, oh, Megan. So it kind of like dampened my <laughs> interest in traveling. But I do think our goal is to get back to traveling safely this summer. And I even have like a box of disposable masks in my Amazon car because I know I'm not going to want to wash masks on vacation. Um, oh, I keep a box of disposable masks in my car at all times just because it's a good thing to have around i do too i do too i just don't i don't find them as comfortable as some of the um oh i hate them i hate that yeah i keep them just in case because i you know i don't want to get in a position i've certainly been out like with my family where they've forgotten one or Mm -hmm. you know throw one at the kids i keep them just in case but they're not my go-to yeah um so i have a big box because I was like, that's going to (laughs) be my treat to myself. Listen, I am more concerned about um, your, your anxious feelings. Like, I mean, it's going to be running your life. I know it's, it's going to be a process to work through it. But last night I was like, man, I need to be medicated. And I don't say that like in a joking way, but like I need, and things like that are always worse at night, right? Like if you're worried about something or nervous about something or scared about something, like everything is worse in the middle of the night and then you wake up in the morning and you're okay. But I do need, I think, some I think better you need strategies. An, yeah, I think you need an outlet, either if it's just like journaling that or, you know, just to like get it out and get it like out of your brain. I don't know. That's what yeah. I'm most concerned about with you. Yeah, you you and me both. (laughs) (laughs) I know. And part of it is I am so concerned with what other people think about me that I was thinking, like, even if I've planned this vacation that I feel our family feels like this is the right decision for us, I worry so much about what other people are going to think about that choice. And that's the hardest thing to let go of because that shouldn't be what's driving me. No, I agree. But that's real. And my husband couldn't, does not care at all what anybody thinks about him, which I would imagine is kind of freeing. Like he doesn't make decisions based on what anybody's going to think about. And he even said to me recently, because it's not just like what friends or strangers or other people are going to think about me, but I have a hard time making decisions worrying about like what the people in my family want. Are they going to like that choice? And he um, last month was like, look, you need to make decisions based on what works for Megan. Like, not in like a screw you guys kind of way. 
you can make choices too. It doesn't always need to be every single person in this family needs to agree with every single decision. Mm -hmm. And like when it comes to vacation, he's like, I don't care. You plan it. You plan it. Like, uh, whatever. We'll have a good time. It won't matter. And that's really hard for me. Yeah. Let that shit go, girl. I want approval. Speaking of approval, we're going to take a quick break and we're going to come right back with Megan and Wendy approved. Guys, it's time for Megan and Wendy Approved, and this is not something I'm worried you're going to judge me for, but um, if you would like your own approved sticker, you can visit MeganandWendy.com and click on the shop button, and Wendy will also put a direct link to that sticker in our show notes. Um, and we are also in the process of creating some other approved merch by request. Yeah. I mentioned before we started recording, I'm just jumping in and going first. Um, <laughs> I mentioned before we started recording that I put on sunless tanner today for the first time in 2021. And I'm kind of like in summer mode briefly. And so I got really excited. I get real lazy about sunless tanner, like as the season goes on. Um, but I get very excited about it. And so keeping in that summer mode, I have a foot product because it is sandal season and I have a real hang up about my heels. And so I have the carousel intensive foot repair. I would call it an ointment. It's in a white tube. It's kind of like a Vaseline feeling, but much more healing than that. And I just slather it on my heels and put some socks on and go about my day. And it is the best thing I've ever put on my feet in terms of the results. I use like I've talked about before the foot file that I love. And then I put this on and boom, soft feet. <laughs> I'm laughing because I feel like either we've had the conversation about this product before or you've never shared it ever. I've never shared it. We have talked about it before. Okay. <laughs> but I've never shared it on the podcast. <laughs> like I understand. Um, I, Instagram has been serving me like uh, these ads for these like silicone heel things. Yes, I love <laughs> them. <laughs> because then your sock absorbs all the stuff that you put on them, but the silicone heel pad like keeps the product and doesn't soak it up. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> well, I need to get my feet in a uh, summer shape as well. They um, are kind of rough. You know, my husband like is so grossed out by the foot file thing, but it should <laughs> it, it works, man. It works, doesn't it? I mean, it? no, it is not uh sexy. <laughs> yeah, no. Know. It's Whatever. not like an intimacy booster. It's kinda like peeing with the door open. Nobody needs to see that. But do it on your own time, man. And I will tell you, back to our earlier conversation, one thing I'm really looking forward to getting back to are pedicures. Whoa. Yes, I would love a regular pedicure situation for sure. I haven't had a oh, pedicure sure. in over a year. Uh, when we went for my birthday. Yes. And I'm too yeah. lazy to give one to myself because it's uncomfortable to bend over for that long. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, there's no, like, easy way to do it, right? Especially when you're our age. Well, I know you're yeah, younger, it's, like, but uncomfortable still. to be, like, yeah. hunched over your feet. Like, I can do my nails all day long because they're, like, right there, easy access on my toes. It's a little bit of a challenge. Yeah. I... I I'm way looking forward to like all the self care type yes. things, massages, facials. We should go to a spa. <laughs> I think that sounds amazing. Yes. Um, okay. So for my Megan and Wendy approved, I shared this on my personal Instagram yesterday and I couldn't believe the feedback I got on it. Um, it was the first time I tried it and hey, it's delicious. It's the Trader Joe's sparkling black tea with peach juice beverage. So good. They come in like a four pack. Um, they're in like a tall skinny can, like a, I would say like a Red Bull can. Gosh, darn, they're delicious. So delicious. Have you tried these? I love them. They're God, great. They're so good. I wish I had more flavors. I, I don't know. Do I need more flavors? I don't I don't know, but the peach one is so good. I like that they're not overly sweet. They're the perfect size. They're super refreshing. I didn't think I would like a sparkling iced tea, but I really love them. They're a great drink. 
I know. I drank it out of the can. Now I'm thinking, like, maybe I'm going to have one today. I'm going to pour it over ice. I think yeah. I, might, I might like that. God, they're delicious. Yeah. They're from Trader Joe's. So pick up a four pack next time you are there. Yeah. And they're, I like, they're kind of almost like that mini soda can size, which is my preferred drink size. Yeah. I like love. a Red Bull can. I know, but I think they're smaller than that. Like a Red I don't Bull know. still seems like a full size soda to me. Do you drink, have you ever drink Red Bull? I have. I don't anymore. I can't imagine that would jive with you at all. <laughs> like, I think you probably end up in the ER thinking that you were having a heart attack or something. That It doesn't, I mean, it didn't ever appeal to me. They taste like cough syrup, in my opinion, but... Way. The sugar-free ones are... Uh, well, you would never drink a sugar-free one. I wouldn't, that's for no. sure. Okay. I know people love the sugar-free ones. I actually stumbled into sugar-free Red, Ball, Red Bull cocktail TikTok the other night. <laughs> what now? Like, <laughs> what? What is that? All of these drinks that people were making with sugar-free Red Bull also, like, with all these other wild additions. I mean, it was a person who worked in, like, a... I couldn't tell where they were in, like, a bar or... I mean, they they had all... Mixologists? Yes, but they were (laughs) not in their home, but they had, like, all of the, like, trying drinks that customers have ordered, and they all had sugar-free Red Bull in them. And then, like, you know, the syrups, they were wild combinations, and I couldn't stop watching her make these drinks. It's so funny. Like, they're having a sugar-free Red Bull, but then they're putting, like, sugary syrup on top of that. That just sounds like... Ugh, too much sugar, sugar bomb. Look, in high school, my McDonald's order was two cheeseburgers, six chicken McNuggets, fries, and a Diet Coke. So, like, I'm not here to shame <laughs> wow! anyone <over> there. <laughs> Boy, that, that's not my current uh, McDonald's know, order, by the but way. Man. But, man... To be a teenager. Yes, to be 16 again. (laughs) All right, everybody. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the podcast. We'll be back on Thursday discussing Don't Go Break in My Heart, the second movie in the Hallmark Spring Fling series. And, of course, we'll be back next week with our regular Tuesday episodes. Until then, have a great week, everybody.